I've been struggling to paint nudes for quite a while, trying to bring them in line with my new drawings, and I decided I wanted to do something with more texture, more colours. So Tom's a really good subject for that, aren't you? Which wear all different things. Um, I tried to limit myself on time, which I've never done before with paintings, whereas with my drawings, I've very much like four to six minutes, that's it. It was a painting that really worked from the start, which doesn't happen very often. Like this one behind is not like that at all. Like the face has been painted out about five times, whereas the one with Tom just worked straight away and really quickly progressed. Oh, you loved it. I loved it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's going to go great in my wardrobe in the future. Uh, yeah. Wardrobe? It's not going to fit. No, but in the future, I imagine I have like a big, massive walk-in wardrobe and just feel pictures of me everywhere. Um, and it was wardrobe. nice to tell people, yeah, like, oh, we're going to an exhibition, you painted a huge painting of me. Sorry. <laughs> Bacon, Maggie Hamblin, David Hockney, their whole catalogue of work is people that they know um, and experiences they've had. So that's how a lot of them become professional artists because their practice is embedded in their lives and their lives are embedded in their practice. So my life drawing project, basically it's a series of drawings of predominantly gay men, but I'm trying to broaden that out. I want to involve more trans people, more people of colour, more women, but you know, I rely on volunteers in a sense. It generally, it might be people I'd slept with at first because they're the ones who are going to be most comfortable to be naked with you. So as it got better, there was a, a wider range of people that were happy to post. I've drawn friends, I still draw strangers a lot and they can come through Instagram or Grindr. <laughs> As a person, you kind of, the last thing you should consider, as long as you've been kind, is what other people think of you. People say to me a lot, they say, oh, I wish I could draw. And I always say to people, like, talent is something that, you, your natural ability, but that will only get you so far. Drawing's a skill, painting's a skill, so you can learn, you can improve your technique. I do it all the time. You know, I'm constantly aware of what I'm doing and how I can improve it. And there's lots of different drawing exercises you can do in live drawing that teach you about all different aspects. If I'm not drawing when I'm at home, uh, 10 minutes a day, I feel really guilty, but I, in, in reality, I don't do that. I don't draw 10 minutes a day, but then I might have other days where I'm painting for hours on end. It's interesting how that, that's the main element of trying to juggle it, but at the end of the day, I'm not trying to juggle raising a family as well. So, you know, it's no good me moaning about feeling a little bit guilty because I didn't do a bit of a scribble after work. <laughs> I'm probably going to die one day and when the work's left behind I wanted it to be sort of clear that some things are left out, some things are not there and that's why every drawing's numbered. And I think we're on 1500 at the minute so if each person's probably been drawn 10 times in a session that gives you an idea of how many people I've drawn. And I, I really, I think it's important that people who are coming to art and that are new to it understand that you will produce lots of crap but not to be intimidated by that, you know, it, we make mistakes. Um, and I suppose your own technique is just a series of your own mistakes coming together. Um, but I wanted that to be really clear that, you know, that not everything's a masterpiece and it doesn't have to be.